close your eyes. I'm adjusting the camera. Whoa, whoa, there we go. Happy Cinco de Mayo! Woohoo! YouTube just notified me that my video went live. I, I thank you for letting me know, YouTube. I'm just working on the background for one of the art quilts while we are waiting for everybody to show up. I use that gridded interfacing and I'm really terrible at getting all of the seams to lay nice and flat so i'm just going to be brutal sally nomi hello hello sometimes with enough steam you can accomplish amazing things that's not too bad whoops that's noisy sorry Hello, Elsie. Yes, I'm live. I don't know why YouTube gave me a notification. That was weird. I didn't click on, you know, notify me when Robin goes live. So who knows? Who knows? It wasn't anything bad, at least, right? And then sometimes with these, oh boy, that's a mess. I might, whoops, what did I use this on last? There we go. Spritz it with some water. Double up the steam. Hi Sharon, hi Kathy. Flip flop seams is not that difficult to fix. Even twisted seams can be fixed. It can be left as is, or you can make a little snip, like, let me set this down. So I have a lot of twisted seams because it, just the way it was going through the machine, and you can either leave it just like that, or just staying away from the stitching, you don't wanna go all the way through, you can go ahead and snip them. And then when you press them, you'll press them in opposite directions and it should lay flatter. But chances are with your quilt, you're going to have seams that are thick anyway. Kathy, Rose, Sharon, Jackie, Teresa, hello everybody. And hello to all of you that are just watching and listening and you don't want to chat or you can't chat. Hello to everyone there too. Welcome to all the new people that have been joining us. I don't know if it's new and you haven't commented in the past but i've been seeing a lot of new names lately appreciate everyone stopping by to hang out with us again for those i don't know why i said again but for those of you that are new when we go live we because it's never just me it's always all of us as friends in a community when we go live we like to come on 10 minutes early at that point i like to come on 10 minutes early just in case there's something wrong and one of my little pet peeves is when YouTube gives you the announcement that it's live. Now, okay, we'll live at three. So at three o'clock, I'm gonna start talking, say hello, hello, thank you, Jackie. Hey everyone, how you doing? Oh wait, I just can't wait to tell you this story. But when you guys come on, you might get an advertisement and you've gotta wait before you can click it over. So when you come here, it might be a couple minutes after three and I'm, I'm going, Ha ha ha, isn't that the craziest thing you've ever heard? And then you just missed like the funny story. So I like to go early and I like to repeat myself a lot. And I do that anyway. So this way, everyone has a chance 
to catch whatever they want to do. All right, let's see. Sometimes I like to think about it to read the comments to the chat. Because if you watch this right away before the 24 or the 36 hours when YouTube puts the live chat back in, you might not know what the heck I'm talking about. So Rose says, I love the chat. Me too. Hate to miss out on it. Maybe I will get done in a bit to a point where can I at least keep up with part of it. But right now I got to get busy. All right, Rose, we'll be here for you. I hope, I mean, I have a feeling we're going to be doing this for a couple hours today. I have no plans. I took something for a migraine, so we're good to go. Hopefully everything works out great and we can just have a little fun today. See there, now that laid pretty flat. Even though it has all the crazy bits to it. Ta-da! For an art quilt, it doesn't really matter anyway because of what we're gonna do, we can... This is the time where you can do... Hello, BC Tracy. This is the time that we can do... Oh, I'm gonna interrupt myself. Is that British? British Columbia Tracy, is that why you're BC? Nope, I'm making a little art quilt with this. This is part of our art quilt that we're gonna start working on. I'm just going to turn it into a little wall hanging. I just thought I would show different ways to do backgrounds. We can chat a little and play a little, but I didn't wanna take this and take up our time doing this background when it's just patchwork and you guys got a handle on patchwork. So this took me, I, I say it took me about an hour because I had to cut all the squares. I took a bunch of two and a half inch squares and trimmed them down to two inches. So that did take some time and then pressing it and it could have been less than an hour, but it had to have been at least 45 minutes. So no sense wasting that time when we have plenty of other fun things to do. Yes, that's you, excellent. I have purchased some new bag patterns and I'm really itching to do some bags. I have some, I, I'll draw you the shape. I can't think about the shape right now. I don't know what it's called. Let me make sure I don't have anything personal and interesting. Okay, the bag, you've got the handles that come here. Let me see. And the bag goes like this and then Kind of like a moon or a smiley face. So these are the handles. This has a zipper. And this is all scrappy patchwork. Someone had put out a trio of them. I don't think it was Minky Kim or Serrano. Oh, it was Minky Kim. I think she's the one that put out this patchwork trio. And it's one of those things where I didn't need to design the pattern to purchase it but I wanted to support her as an artist and it allows me not to think. So that was a really fun one. I have a couple more of the cell phone ones. I have a couple zipper pouches and I just, uh, I'm trying to balance work and the whole thing of getting ready for the move and all of that. And I tell you, it's not going very good. It's going fine. Everything is great. I just, I want to have, I want to have days where I can just sit here and play. Davi, you made it. Welcome, welcome. And then I'll just sit here and pick out all the threads. It's three o'clock. Everyone's gonna start popping in now. This could easily be for a bag. And even though, I don't know. I, I have to, let me look. Cause some of these, they just, they look like they're not, yeah, they're just shy of a full inch and a half because what I was doing, I wasn't being particular about where I laid them on the grid. So some of them are an inch and three eighths and some of them are an inch and a half. And I think this would be fine for a bag, but it just, it, it just irks me the way it is. So this, I, I probably wouldn't, unless, I could put what we're going to do today and then turn it into a bag, but nope, this is going to be a wall hanging. So welcome everybody. I hope you guys are going to have some fun chit chatting with friends today. And today we're just going to be a little creative. 
I get a lot of comments about Robin. I, I can't work with my scraps. I, I don't. I want to make an art. We're going to work on art quilts today, Sharon. And people are like, I want to do art quilts, but I, I feel intimidated. I don't know where to start. I feel you know because a lot of you guys will feel like it has to be this big fancy. Hello, Michelle. This big fancy thing where. We're, it's because it's, I think maybe because it's called art. It's an art quilt. We have to be really kind of big and into it. Let me lean over here and show you something. I take it off the wall. If you've been here for a bit, you might remember this. This is an art quilt. Some people have certain feelings about what an art quilt is called, but this is an art quilt. This is just two pieces of fabric sewn together as a background, flower cut out, and here's a giant piece of rickrack for the stem and a little pot. Boom, art quilt. But I thought that might be a little bit, a little bit simple. You guys might be wanting a little bit something more in depth. So I thought, so, so I thought today that we would have just a little bit more fun and we would, we would try to relax and be able to use some of our scraps and make an art, how about if we call it this, an art style quilt or a creative scrappy mini quilt. You can name it whatever makes you feel comfortable. An art quilt can be so many different things to different people. When you go into a museum and you see art, there's so many different things. There's those, those really, you know, you're talking Picasso's and Van Gogh's and Mona Lisa and all these fancy paintings. But then you also have just landscaping and different, just a nice, simple painting that you recognize everything. And then there's those, those, what are they? They're not statues. They're, they're those works of art where everyone took the garbage and put it together and create a sculpture. I was close. And they created a sculpture from the recycle bin. And then they sell it for $5,000. And you're looking at it and like, oh, I have that in my backyard kind of holding up my fence or something. And they just sold it for $5,000. So what do they say? Art is in the eye of the beholder. So today we're gonna behold some art. How's that? Was that good? I am totally 1000% making it up as I go along today. I have a couple thoughts in the back of my head but we are going to go based on if you say, hey, Robin, do this, or if you ask a question, or if you just leave me alone and you chat among yourselves and I just do my thing. We're just going to flow as it goes. Hello, lurking is fine. We'll be here. Pop in if you want. Hang out and do your thing. I know a lot of people like to work on projects during this time. It helps you guys know for an hour and a half or two hours you're going to work on this project whatever your project is and you stick with it because you have us chatting in the background. So I made this patchwork background. I used that gridded interfacing. If you, it was really interesting because I had a comment on my gridded interfacing video. I actually kind of forgot that I did it and someone had asked me about it or said a comment on it or something. So I went and searched on YouTube for gridded interfacing. Hey look, my video came up first. I thought that was kind of exciting. And that led me to wander off. And as of yesterday, Joann's has this gridded interfacing on sale. I think it's like 40 or 50% off or something. But this is just basic interfacing and it has lines on it. So afterwards, I didn't think to put it in the description box, but I can add that video in. I just need to make notes for myself so I remember when we're done what I need to do. I just have this notepad, notepad. I took the cover off and when I need a clean piece of paper, I just rip the glue like that and off we go, right? Okay. So, gridded interfacing. Several of you have been asking for these videos for a while and we're finally gonna go ahead and do it. Of course, you can just sew a whole bunch of squares together and create your background like this. You don't need to use a gridded interfacing. Personally, I like to go without the gridded interfacing. I used it because I have it and I wanted to show it to you. 
we're going to work on something small. So when you think of quilt, you think maybe you might be thinking a large bed quilt or something. Not really. Uh, if you watch the quilt show, if several years ago, I haven't watched them in a while. I usually binge. I wait a year or two. I pay for the subscription. I watch all the back ones. And then I, I, I stop paying until another couple years. But they did an Alzheimer's fundraiser. And all of the celebrity quilter type people, they took a piece of felt, eight and a half by 11 and a half, like a sheet of paper. I think everyone did it on black just for unity, but you cover it with stuff so it doesn't matter. So they made art quilts on this and it fit in one of those cardboard flat rate priority mail envelopes so everyone could easily mail it. They knew all the sizes were gonna be the same. There wasn't gonna be one that's 36 inches and one that's gonna be six by six and stuff like that. So you can start with just a piece of felt as your background. Or maybe you wanna work with some batting. So I had two pieces of not quite the size of a mug rug or almost the size of a mug rug. I went ahead and zigzag stitched them together today so I can make a little art quilt on here. I grabbed a piece of fusible fleece this might not surprise you, but I grabbed one, I cut it off so it's taller. I have saved several patchwork and applique cactus patterns, but I thought, well, maybe this week, next week, eventually, it'd be fun to, oh, I'm gonna put the glue side up. You can, I think we're gonna, not this one this week, we're, I don't know, we'll, I, blah, 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 either this or the interfacing, but you can just lay your background pieces on here and you're not going to sew them together, you're just going to layer them so that there's no open spaces to see. You're gonna make the background in a layering technique. So I wanna work on that today. So maybe you don't have fusible fleece, so I have this piece of interfacing. So I thought today we would work on cactuses or cacti and flowers. So today, I made this out of two inch squares. I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by eight, three, six, eight. You can choose whatever you want, but I thought I would make something similar to what I showed you, but just make the flower. And I'm hoping that for those of you that have that mental block where your brain is very, I don't want to ever sound like I'm being mean and picking on you, but very regimented that you're you're a patchwork person you make quilt blocks the thought of doing free form that's what's a good word the thought of doing free form projects it kind of scares you I just talk enough until I think of words that's what I do on the videos and then delete the stuff where you don't get the when you hear the wrong words so I thought today we'd make this is a comfortable free form background you see I stuck with one color of blue. You can take this and you can shade it. So you can have, maybe you're gonna have the grass down here. We're gonna do that when we work on the bigger ones. You're gonna have the grass. Maybe you're gonna do a sandy beach and then you have the sky or maybe you're gonna pull in a cloud somewhere. You can have a lot of fun with your smaller scraps, some of your larger scraps, we can just play. But I thought as a good way to help you guys out, we'll use one color. I try to keep some of the ones that really stand out like the polka dots in groups of three odd numbers because that's supposed to be a thing. I have two of these that's not odd, two of those that's not odd, so obviously I don't follow my own thought process, but I just grabbed scraps. So I went over. I actually have a two and a half inch scrap bin, but this is easier to grab. I just grab my bin and say, okay, Maybe this is too much for you. So you grab a handful and this is what I'm gonna play with today. When you're finished, if you feel like you've made the most awful, ugliest, oh my goodness thing, turn it into a pot holder. Cut it down into fours, make coasters. Donate it, turn it into a placemat and donate it to like a Meals on Wheels type program. So you've used up some of that creativity. You've, you've relaxed that, that brain muscles and allowed you to do this. So enough chitter chatter. Let's go ahead and start, start making a flower for this. 
Hi, Lynn. I'm glad you made it. When I'm making applique, now you can very easily Google flowers, uh, use coloring books, say like, oh, flower coloring books or flower outline, flower applique, and just find something. Or I'll look at this and I'll say, okay, I want to have maybe a circle here. Do I have something that's about that size? Well, let me go over here. I want to put my head in there. I'm gonna look, I have this uh, sizing. Oh, that might work. So I can always use that to trace around because we're going to use some heat and bond. But then I want some petals. So let me see if I put this here. Let me trace around it. Now I came in today just knowing I'm going to do a scrappy background and then I'm going to put a flower on it. You can sketch this out on a piece of paper. If you're using the interfacing, you could put your sketch underneath the interfacing and follow it as if you were tracing in the coloring books. I used to love those coloring books that had the tracing pages on it. It made me feel like I was an actual artist because look, I could trace things like, oh, I made this horse or something like that. So I'm thinking I'm gonna to wanna to do a couple flowers. So maybe I want one here. I don't wanna take the time to trace. Oh, look, I got a, a partial one. So maybe I wanna put a flower over there. And maybe I'll put a flower over here, right? So now I need to figure out my petal size. What size petals do I need? Well, I really like the rounded petals and I like those pointed ones. So take a pencil or friction. So I like the ones that go like this. And I like the petals that have, let me see, can you guys see? See those petals? And they don't have to be absolutely perfect. If you looked into your flower garden, they're not perfect. I do like to have a nice point on it. So I might could take these, just get a rough thing. Sometimes I'll draw right onto my heat and bond, especially if I'm using pencil, because of course then you can erase it. Now is this, is this leaf? or a petal or whatever you want to call it is going to be big enough because this could be a leaf if we had the big flower kind of looks small but i could put it over there so maybe i need something bigger off of this guy let me make this one a little bit bigger and since i'm making this with paper if i make a mistake oh it's not a big deal Okay, that's not too bad. I kind of like that because this will be one color and then I'll have a different color petal. So I can put a whole bunch of these all the way around and figure out how many I need. And then I can have the pointed one there. I could just put this directly in the center and make it really large. But you see a lot of things when they say to put it Thank you, Devi. I, I love the fabric postcards. I don't know. I, they are a form of art, definitely. I'm trying different things this year with the postcards to make them a little bit more on the actual painting art side of it. So they say it's really nice to have something that's like cut off. And then whether or not, now these would be too big over here, I think. So you can have a few of them like that. So I have to decide what size do I want. This is, I have so many of these notebooks. I'm always giving, someone's always giving them to me or I'm picking them up somewhere. So let's see, did I like, did I like that size in there? Maybe I want something larger. What do I have that's larger? Does my circle need to be perfect? Oh, I don't know, how do I feel about that? There's always something. Oh, well, let's just make one giant one, right? Let's just make one huge, huge flower on this and have some of the petals be so long that they go right off the page. I may sit here and play all day and only end up with a fabric postcard or a mug rug at the end because I change my mind and I switch things up and I can't decide. 
And I don't know why I'm trying to be perfect on this because this isn't my final piece, but yeah. So there's my giant flower. So what do I need? I really want to do the long pointed ones. I really want to do the long pointed ones. Yeah, that feels good. I want to have it. Now, some of you guys are really great and you can just pick up a piece of fabric and cut it right to the shape and you're happy with it. And if we're, if we're working with scraps, then maybe it doesn't matter too much if we oh, make something a little bit of a mistake in or something like that. If we're playing with scraps, it's not going to matter too much. Now, directly in the center might not be my best option. I might want to go up a little bit like this, especially if I want some of them to come off like that. I could have it higher up so I can have the stem. I am not feeling this at all, but at the same time, I'm looking at, you know, lined notebook paper. So let me bring in some fabric. I almost said let me bring in some flowers, but that's not it. So let me bring in my yellow scraps. And I can do that trick like you do when you're baking and you just kind of fold it all under just to get an idea. We don't need it to be perfect. We're gonna use heat and bond, but I want just a roundabout shape about the size of what I'm doing to give my eye an idea. No, do I like that? No, I do not. I feel like for this, I want more of something like this, a big, bold yellow for my center. So that makes me happy. So I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to get my heat and bond scraps and see what I have. So keep everything. You never know what you're going to need. Where is my... So this is the one I think that I want, and I, I'm, I'm not sure on that right now. But I know I want this yellow circle. So I'm going to go in here and I seriously doubt that I have anything this size. So that means that I get to make a total mess today. I'm using the purple, so this is the heat and bond light so I can sew through it. Uh-oh, I see a wheel of death. Yes, Jackie, buy the ones that are on sale. Pick everything. I still have... I have stuff, Robbie is 24 this year. I have stuff from when he was in middle school. Is it? No, nope, my phone looks good. It just looks like there. I don't know what's been going on with Xfinity lately, but I've been having a lot of problems with them lately. Don't use a Sharpie marker on your good pressing station. Just as a little warning. Now, because I have this blue patchwork, I know I don't want this. I know that things can shine through, so I'm not gonna cut the center of this out. I'm gonna leave it there, but I wanna leave a eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of heat and bond around that circle. And if I don't leave all this extra heat and bond on, I'll save all of this for smaller projects. Oh my goodness, what is going on? I need to refresh my YouTube. It's just spinning like crazy. This way I won't use too much of my fabric. Turning the iron on. We're going to put this, uh, I can't see any questions and comments right now. I'm refreshing the back of my fabric, but if I were to put this fabric directly on here without any of the heat and bond, I can see a lot of my blue through it. And for this project, I'm not too concerned about that, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Wait for the iron to heat up. That little cordless one gets cold, real, uh, turns off real quick when I set it down. If you have like a crumb block 
if you're using a larger circle or whatever, maybe you're making a house and you want to put a little house there or something like that, you can use one of your crumb blocks or scrap block that you've sewn. Back of this yellow. Follow the directions on whatever you're using. You can use pins, you can use glue. Thank you. We are making uh, little art quilts today. We're kind of making it up as we go along. This is our first time doing art quilts here on RS Island Crafts. And we're just using this as an exercise to relax our brain and allow us to play with scraps and not to stress out. I've talked before about having a, I leave a little bit of the fabric just past the heat and bond, mostly so I don't iron it to my pressing station. I used a friction pen. My circle went right away. It's okay, I'll draw it again. Could be a lot worse than that. At least it was only a circle. We've talked about having scraps in a brown paper bag and just pulling them out and sewing crumb blocks and stuff. And some people are like, oh no, no, Robin, I can't do that. So we're gonna ease into this art quilt thing. There's a variety of ways that we can do this. And today we are, what I'm figuring is, I, I think this is probably a nice simple version that should allow most of us to just be a little creative, play with our fabrics, and by using that only blue background, one color, and I thought blue for the sky, plus I have a lot of blue scraps that I need to find uses for, that this way, blue sky, bunch of blue scraps, and I shouldn't have to think too much. You can even use charm packs if you want. Hi, Giovanna. Now to actually cut this out, I am going to, I don't like those scissors for fabric like that. I, do you ever sit here and I have like five different pair of scissors out? I'm going to, because this is scraps, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this whole thing like that and cut like that. Come on YouTube, quit messing with me. All right, hold on. I have to tidy up a second. It bothered me too much. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Okay. I'm going to save this because once it has a heat and bond on this piece of fabric, I'm going to put it in my heat and bond scraps so that I can have a little bit of fun with that because that can be used in an art quilt. So I'm going to cut directly on my line now. And it all depends on how you feel about it, whether it's perfect. Now remember when you're cutting circles, I even have my hand right up against my body, my wrist. I'm not moving my arm or my hand or my wrist. I'm moving my left hand and that's going to give me the smoothest circle. Carol Duvall taught me this. Last I checked, she is still in a retirement home doing well, going out for walks and everything. I learned so many things. My multi-crafting is all Carol Duvall. She taught me how to do all the different things. And now, let's see what I can do this without making a mess. So here, here's my stuff with heat and bond on it already. Like, oh, we can play with this. There's things you can do. If you can't do like scrappy, if you have like a go cutter or again, use like the comic books and stuff like that. I have a butterfly. This is from my go cutter. So now I have a little butterfly and I might have a little flower. I have dragonflies in here. So I can use that or I can take pieces here that even though this is a heart, I can cut this into something else Maybe if I cut this heart in half-ish, now I have a petal that's shaped like that. I miss her shows too. I, I pulled them up a couple, there's some on YouTube and stuff, but it's, it's just not quite the same. I was hoping, I wanted to watch them like from episode one all the way through 
but it's like someone like me who put Carol Duvall's show on my channel and it's the quality wasn't the greatest when she filmed them and now it's even worse so yeah the big shots the is it a cricket is that what it's called I could also have a sun but now I have the center of my flower so now I have to decide I worked on a pattern with my patrons where they had you do the circles and then you cut them in half and you put them around like this and you just keep working your way around and you have a flower. So if you put this maybe brown in the center, you can have a, hi Renee, you, is that Renee? Yeah, hi Renee, you can have like a sunflower. Make this a little bit of a brownie yellow color and then have your petals go all around like that. Or we have our, our half circle here, maybe, what can we do here? We could just take it So now this is based off of that center circle. So I guess in a way it's the same size-ish. So I can have some petals that go around. They don't even have to be the same size if you don't want them to. I don't mind if they're not the same size, but I kind of would like them similar, you know. All right, just to save the time of playing, I am going to take this mess and throw some of it on the floor so I have to clean it up later. After all my friends go home, oh, throw some more on the floor. Yep, and some more on the floor. Ay, ay, ay. So now I can see my scraps and see if I can get some of these. Now I wonder how many, oh, that bothers me. <laughs> That's funny. Oy vey, okay. So how many of these do I want to go around? So one, two, three, four, five. I'm thinking eight, right? Eight sound good? Hello, hello. It happened once. Um, anybody else having trouble? With yeah, my YouTube has been spinning a couple times, Jackie. It seems fine on my phone, but when I look at the YouTube, it's... Fat ladybug with wings, I got you. Hold on, don't. Fat ladybug with wings would be great. And let me just, hold on, where did I see that? I have it. Oh no, where'd you go? I actually have a fat lady, I have ladybugs in here. There we are, see look. Even if you don't have the ability or you don't feel comfortable, oh, those are, are they? They almost look like beetles, don't they? So you can even add these, like you can cut these out and put a little heat and bond on them. So let me cut this one out. That's good scissors. I don't like to, I, I'll use my good scissors on a lot of stuff, but I do not like to use it on heat and bond paper. It seems a little tough. So I can add this guy. He doesn't even have to be Come on, YouTube. He doesn't even have to be, you know, precisely cut out or anything like that. So what I do with this is I have an applique sheet. This is just a Fonz and Porter one that I picked up at Joann's a gazillion years ago. And it keeps everything from sticking so that I can take this just roughly cut the heat and bond off of it and just to make sure it's not going to stick to my iron or my pressing mat. I'll sandwich him in there. And as you get going and as you start thinking about it, you're like, hmm, what can I add to this? How can I put a little bit more? For those of you that do quilts in the patchwork sense of it, you're like, hmm, should I add a border onto it? You know, what can I add a little bit more to this? So now I have 
that guy. So he can go, if I don't lose him, he can go into something. Whoop, 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 whoop. Now I can take this and I can take, whoop, that's not gonna work. And you know what, your heat and bond doesn't need to be the exact size of your petal. Because you're just going to put this on the back of fabric, trace this on the back of it. Sorry, I have little ants everywhere since the hurricane. They just seem to love it here. It doesn't need to fully cover what you're doing. Thank you so much, Joan. You're very sweet. Yep, all of the things, especially, you know, let's say you don't like, like the, you may not like bees out in the real world, but you can add them to your quilt if, you know, if that's okay with you. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. There we go. Because I'll use this and I'll trace it on, like I said, on the back of the fabric after I adhere this. Because if you think about it, we're going to be using, I'm not pulling out yardage. I'm not pulling out, oh, I don't want to use that not pulling out like big chunks of fabric or anything like that I'm just going to use scraps that chances are most of you probably have already thrown away or would like to throw away one two three there's four of them and now we're just going to play with it a little bit five that's a heart I don't want to use that we can use that seven and eight so I said these aren't even like the right size, so it, it doesn't, there's an extra one. It doesn't really matter that much. We can just kind of wing it. So what color do you think we should make our, our petals? Because remember we have the blue background and we have a yellow. Oh no. Floods are hard. That, that's floods. Floods are, are scary and it's just such, this is not sharp. It, it causes, it's like, you would think, okay, it's just a little water and it was just there for a little while or something. Like, no, it's been there a long time. I mean, even a short amount of time, it causes a lot of damage. I'm just cutting around my ladybugs so that none of the heat and bond is gonna stick to my iron. Make sure the iron stays awake, okay. So maybe we should, let me put the blues away. Maybe we should have some, we can have like a rainbow of colors. We don't have to have them all the same. We can alternate, maybe we wanna alternate pinks and purples to go up against our blue background. Some nice light colors. So we have to have, if this is what we're gonna do, Carol Duvall's daughters were in it for a little bit, but I don't know now because I think Carol Duvall is like 70, 80, 90. She's up there, right? So that would make her daughters, you know, into their 40s and 50s. And I don't know if they're doing that. Her son was the one that did it with her. You know how like Missouri Star that they have their daughters and sons and in-laws and all that stuff doing it? Carol Duvall, I think her son was like the producer or something like that. So look, I already have like these, these are already in the shape of like a flower petal. So one of you guys had sent these to me. So we are already into that shape of a flower petal. If we wanted it, we could just say, oh, look at what I just found. I don't even have to do any of this work that I thought I had to. Look, I have this. Now this isn't going to work for us today because the purple is not sticking out, but I have I have a, oh, I kind of like, I really like this rounded bit. So I have a solution for that too. So we have all these rounded pieces, right? And they're not really standing out. So what we can do is we can put another piece of fabric behind there. If we wanted to, to make the petal stand out. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shape 
and use it on my pink fabrics, which I need a bigger container, and make pink petals, because I think the pinks are going to stand out better against the blue. Like I might, I might even want to change this to white now. And this is what happens. Now, again, I'm playing with scraps. I haven't used anything that is, you know, really important and big pieces. I haven't, I haven't ruined anything. I can change my mind. So this now needs to be white, but it's got that on it. So I can save that for something else. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go into my white scraps and I'm going to find a piece of white that I like. And for this, I would like this like fun polka dot. It's too small, but it's also too see-through. I'd have to layer it to definitely, I wouldn't want the blue to come through that much on like the white. This is a silvery white. So we're going to go with that. Look, I changed my mind. It's okay. I can do that. Or before I do that, what about this? Do you think I would prefer an aqua? Or a teal? What if I put... I don't think the teal pops off of it because it's too much blue. Could you put small pieces of brown on the yellow to make it look better with the pink? I could. I could, you know, add, I can add quilting stitches to make it into the sunflower. But I think that white right there is going to look nice with the pink. So I changed my mind. What are you going to do, right? This is my project or our project that we're working together. And if we want to change it, you know, we can. I'm not going to, I'm not throwing this away. I'll use it somewhere else. And I'll make sure I don't use the Frixion pen. When I was making a sunflower, I don't have it because someone purchased it from my Etsy shop. But when I made a sunflower mug rug to calm down that yellow and make it more sunflowery, or that sunflower when I had all those half circle petals, I think it was, it was still like a mini quilt or something. I went ahead and I used the brown stitches to help calm down the brightness of the yellow and bring it a little bit more into the sunflower look. I like the pink too. I think the pink is a better option. The purple, if I have maybe a lighter purple, it might work, but these blues, it just didn't quite work against. So I'll do that. Here is it. And this white has silver in it, so it's kind of shimmery. Now, if I'm worried that this white is a little too see-through, then I come into my... <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if you guys just kind of like laugh at me. Robin, you're just crazy. I have lightweight and midweight interfacing scraps. So I'll just take my interfacing. I have a little bit of a scrap here. Let's see where it's gonna fit. Considering my circle isn't going to be a square, you know. Then I can use this, and this is gonna help against the shadowing of the blue. My patrons and I figured all this out when we were making the gnome mug rug. I thought it would be okay that the white would be dark enough, but it wasn't. So now let me see. Make sure I have glue side. Most times with interfacing, you want to press it from the fabric side. You can use a pressing cloth. You can put the that brown applique sheet down. I'm just going to not go all the way to the edge where my interfacing is sticking out. So this is gonna be a circle, I'm not gonna need it anyways. Put the white, oh, like a center? Well, hold on, we'll get that. We can try that, we can try that. I'm a, I just put the iron away and I still need it, <laughs> that's funny. 
I'm, I'm willing to try whatever you guys want. When we're doing these live streams, I really like when you guys have opinions because my opinion's always the same because I only know what I know. Exactly. Now, when I do mine, Jackie, I put a whole thing of stabilizer behind um, my, my piece, but I buy the PF44 and I, I get it when Joann's has it on sale for like 49 or 69 cents a yard, then I'll buy 15 or 20 yards of it and put out like a free shipping coupon or something on like that. All right, so we're gonna cut this white out, right? We're agreeing on that. Ooh, that's hot. We're supposed to let it cool, but who says we listen, right? Then I'll have to read your comment again to make sure I'm thinking what you're thinking. I'm really bad at reading something quickly and putting my own thoughts into it so I don't get the gist of it. Now, I am not doing a very good job with the circle, but I'm going to save this too. This is going to go into my heat and bond scraps because now I have this circle and if I were to put it down, that little slit will disappear. Maybe I want to put some, well, maybe I want to put something here. Maybe I have... Like when I was doing those Christmas things. So maybe I have, hold on, I'll get there. I spy, something I spy. Okay. Mud, or could you put small pieces of brown? Nope, nope, put the white with the yellow in the middle, but smaller. So you want me to put the white here and you want me to use the yellow, or do you want me to put the yellow, is it this way or this way? I have three bolts of the PF44 Amazon had on the daily deal. Oh, I'm gonna put it onto, I, I'm gonna put it onto one of my lists, Jackie, because then whenever you have it on one, I have it set up on my list and they always tell me when it's on sale. And then I am one of those terrible people that goes and gets it because it's something I'm gonna need. Yellow on top, you like the yellow on top? So now we need this to be smaller, like this. You think that would be good? I have a big light right there where my head is, so you see how that is? Do you think that's enough or should we make it smaller? Hi, Susan, we are making an art quilt. We're just kind of having fun. See, that's what we're doing. We, uh, yeah, but we're making, the thing we're making today is this blue patchwork let us, now I'm fine. If you've been here for a while, you guys know I play with my scraps, I'm good. I, I have no problem with it. But I'm trying to help people relax a little. And each live stream now throughout the summer, we're gonna get a little bit more in depth and we're gonna work on some other things. But for this one, we're gonna, I decided to do a patchwork on the back of the, the gridded interface thing. And we're making a big, bold flower. Because this that one's good. So this, one, this allowed us to relax a little bit and put our scraps together. Because some people told me many times that they struggle with taking their scraps and using them and they just want it they save them because it's money and they don't want to waste anything but they, they don't know how to use them and everyone I shouldn't say everyone but many people have wanted to do art quilts for a while and I was struggling with it then I decided you know what most of you are used to me you've been here for a while you kind of can see my train of thought a little bit and then you jump in and tell me where I go wrong I get a little off track a little bit no no no, no, Giovanna, what? No, no. Yellow on top? I stopped in time. Giovanna says yellow on top. All right. Yellow, it means I need to do this. I'm glad I looked up. Sometimes it's fun to let you guys just drive the train, drive the car, whatever they call it, and you guys can decide what we're gonna do and see what we come up with. All right, I'm cutting it. And if it's wrong, it's all Giovanna's fault. 
We're going to totally blame her. You can make this a little ragged too. But this, sun this Sunday, this Friday, this live stream, we are just going simple. Patchwork background and we're going to play a little bit. And it, we're going to run out of time. We're not making the cactus or, or another flower or anything like that. So we'll do that next time. I also have a kit I've shown you in the past. I've been saving it. And I won this on blog probably 15 years ago. But it's all the different stuff that came in here to make... Where is it? To make a little art quilt and you do it with your initial. So you take your initial and you make your little patchwork and then you add embroidery and buttons and beads. Like today, we're not even talking buttons and beads and embroidery and machine embroidery and, and painting with thread and all of that stuff. We're not even doing any of that. I lost my chair. All right, so now raw edge applique. Yep. We're also going to do the. Uh, I'm going. I'll put a link down. Let me write that down. I think. I think it's cranky. No, it's not cranky. Is it cranky? I'm going to put a link for slow stitching. She made a wrist cuff. Now, I've seen this before, I've made them before, it's nothing new, but it's a new video, so I'll link it for you guys, and she does a lot of the slow stitching, I think it's, what is it, the Kiwana, where you just sit there and you just hand stitch it and all. This is what you wanted? Should I make this more pointed, like you do, like... Rounder, but like this. Because right now it looks like an egg. Oh no, Jackie, I'm so sorry. So do you think, I think we should go ahead and make this cut into it a little bit like, like here is our center circle. And I think maybe not as deep, but just so it has Right, that's what I was thinking. It looks like an egg, right? So I think we need to, to roughen it up a little bit so it's not an eggy. Then the pink petals. So I, I think we're gonna take that chance. And I'm going to use, I'm gonna use the good scissors just to be able to do this. Oh, pinking shears. What is it gonna look like with pinking shears? I think it's a little bit big too, that it needs to be cut down some. Do, 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 round and round we go. If my grandmother, grand, well, mostly my grandmother ever saw me, she used to tease me all the time. She's like, Robin, you can't even draw a straight line with a ruler. And I, I never could. I actually took a drafting class in high school and I learned how to draw a straight line without a ruler. But apparently I can't do a circle. still kind of looks like an egg, doesn't it? I don't think the yellow's going to work, Giovanna. Put the ladybug in the center. And sometimes it's like, nope, it just didn't work. And it's okay not to work. If you had an idea and you're like, okay, the perfect circle is too much like a fried egg. The pinking shears might not be enough. So I'm gonna try this and then I'm gonna decide, oh my goodness, you should have left it alone because sometimes you have to know when to stop and when to quit touching things. Yeah, the, the fried egg is just, it, it might work with different colors, just the white and yellow. While it sounds great, and I think in certain ways it would work, like if it wasn't, if it was more of a,
more of a like a crumb block yellow or a crumb block white where it's not so perfect I think either way we're gonna end up with <laughs> well you love fried eggs well I think there you go there's your fried egg so I'm gonna cut out a bunch of these Maybe it needs to be a little off center to help it. So let's cut these. Let's cut eight of these. Frixion pan in case I mix up, mess up. Oh, look, I could probably get two out of this one. Because then we can use a glue stick or we can use a liquid glue or we can go really crazy. And a pin in it and just cut it out because remember we're not it's all the blue background you could make an evening kind of quilt like by the light of a big yellow moon yep we could do a big yellow moon definitely smaller petals we're going for big and bold you think this is too big and bold because I can so maybe like this way or this way because they're going to overlap like this you see what I'm saying you think they're still too big well I'm going to start with it big and we can always trim it down, right? But if we start small, then I gotta go find more fabric. You like them? Remember too, you have to quilt this afterwards too, right? Now you can pre-quilt the background. If you're, maybe if you're using the fusible fleece or the batting, you wanna pre-quilt the background and then just do like some applique type things on you know, just stitch the applique down onto the front. So maybe we don't even have heat and bond. Maybe we're just gonna wing it. Oh, that's right, I got two. So here's one, here's the other. Now the heat and bond is gonna give you structure. So it's gonna give you that bit of Oh, look, that's a fun pink. Oh, well, maybe we can do two. We only need four of them. Two small, and they will disappear into the background, right? Because we're going, we're going wild and crazy. We're just, we're being crazy, and we're making a huge flower. Even if the petals end up coming off of the edge, we're gonna be like, that's okay. We're good with that. We're, we're going, we're going huge. Because if it's small, it's gonna drown in the background. You know, it's not going to. It's not going to be big and bold. It's, it's going to be all about the blue background. So then if you're growing small, you might need to have more than one flower, which we talked about that at one point. So if you hadn't seen that, you can catch the replay. So maybe you need to have more of them. And I like having something go off the edge. That's supposed to be really art quilty type. And it's a simple way to level up your art quilt and make it just to be a little bit more. We can come back through with our thread painting or our embroidery stitches, add beads to it. We can go like around here. You can take satin stitch, the feather type stitch or something like that. Now I've got heat and bond on this. So once we get this all figured out, this is gonna hold the flower together. You know what I'm saying? So we don't even have to worry about that. We just need to worry about getting it hooked up. Do we want? We want wild and crazy. Now I'm I don't have enough. This one would be nice too, but I don't I only have one. Okay, now just because I have scraps and everything, I'm just like you guys. I can't. I can't use this. This has to go in a uh scrappy tote bag. I can't use it. I just I can't do it. I can't do it. How about this? 
Can we bring some gray in? The petals all blend together. Could you use a colored pen to make them look individual? Oh yeah. But see, now, do you think they're blending together now that we've alternated them? Yeah, that's yes, what I agree. The pink's definitely better. And we might even change the white circle to purple. Uh, we're not even done yet. It's not 100%. Until it's stitched down, it doesn't count. I, I think this might need to be, you like the gray? Okay, so I'm going to do these two. And then I'm going to do these two. I think someone was making a quilt out of that. I always wonder, do you guys, after you send me your scraps, do you ever see them on the video and go, oh, that's my fabric. Because when I see stuff that other people make, I'm always like, I have that fabric too. Of course you do. It's, it's Joann's or, you know, it's just a basic name brand fabric. So yeah, you have that fabric too, Robin. It's not all that special. She said that before. What? Oh, before I started doing it? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, all the purple together and stuff, that wasn't going to work. And all the same color pink wasn't going to work. I think we need to have texture. So if you want to really start doing like different various things and you feel like you can spread your, rings, your wings a little bit, start with a mug rug. Start with a fabric postcard. Start with something that, you know, like an 8x8 eight eight that could end up being a hot pad or something or something... Like I said, the size of the sheet of felt. I think this is very doable. You don't have a lot of space. You can have it this way or this way. It gives you a little bit to play with and it's not overwhelming as if it was this huge project. So you can start collecting beads and embroidery floss and all kinds of fun stuff. And that, see the excitement in my voice? That's when I get trouble. Yep, you can hand sew this very easily. I would suggest not using the heat and bond though. That can be a little bit difficult to hand stitch through or keep it away from the edges so that you're only stitching through fabric. We are going to, I have the sewing machine out, we're not gonna use it, but we are going to, in a future time, we're going to work on something that's just all hand stitched. We're not gonna have, I'm gonna clear off the table and just bring out the fun stuff and we're just gonna go. And we're going to do, it'll be more than just one, oh, YouTube, one live stream. And after I'm at the kid's house and if I don't really feel comfortable and have the space to do tutorials, we might just do live streams like this where we just kind of work and play and I don't need to have a big setup for the sewing machine and all that because I might not have I'm thinking okay well I have the space for the sewing machine now okay well where's the fabric gonna go and where's my bed gonna go and and oh no you know three six there's eight there maybe we need nine all right let's spread this out and do it like this I'm gonna bring over a fun piece of purple to see if we like the purple better Uh, I was going to look through the camera, but I could see it there. Let me go find, oh, there's not that so good, not good purple. I think a nice, bright, sparkly purple. Boy, am I going to have a mess to clean up today. So we have a dark purple. Thank you. Yeah, you can hand stitch through it. But it's not fun. Your fingers are going to get sore after a while. Oh, this one has, that's all right. We're going to work on that. So I have, I have this purple. Oh, this is pretty, but this isn't going to work for the center, but that's pretty for something. And then, okay. Purple number one. Purple number two, I think that might be it. We have purple number three, and I'll show them to you again if we can see. Oh, look, if this was a bigger piece, 
you could take the flower from the center of it and center it right there and have a flower inside a flower. So you can let your fabric do the work for you. Yeah, we can do that one. One, two, three, four. Let me just see if I can find one more. Oh, we can go crazy. Look at this. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Four. You're voting for the like basket weave. Three, three, four. Giovanna cheated. She voted twice. All right, so I'm going to show you what three and four look like. If we... I'm going to use a circle to go like that. Okay. So there is sparkle. There is basket weave. I'm bringing my favorite in. And then the pale purple. So sparkle, basket, or pale. Ladies and gentlemen, think on that for a minute. I'm going to put this purple away and put the pink away. And more purple and more pink. Sparkle, basket, sparkle, sparkle, basket. And I definitely, I'm not getting rid of these petals or cutting into them in any weird way because I'll use these in something else. And that might work on a giant, a giant tote bag front or something like that. All right, sparkle, one, two, three, four, sparkle, and two, nobody likes my light colored one. <sighs> Outvoted in my own craft room, I see how it is. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. I'm only teasing because all I have to do is when I click the bye bye button and uh, do whatever I want after you guys all leave, right? I can make another one. The fabric is here. I can make. Okay, come on, you two. You got this. Come on, YouTube. Are you on my phone still? Yeah, my phone is good. Yeah. So I just can't see. So if something happens and we get left behind and lost, we are going to come back on the next live stream, which will be on the 19th. It's a new moon, if anyone cares about that. I can see it on the calendar. 3 p.m. Eastern. And we are going to work on a different type of art style quilt. I'm going to show you on the next live stream on how to free form piece the back of it that way we can have a little bit of fun and then once I move in with my kids I'm really leaning towards about 90% that I am just going to oh you know I'm funny I'm thinking like I can't see the picture but I can still see the chat but it's top chat I need live chat come on well yeah but I'm going to finish this off and I'll put it in the shop it's not something I'll keep so if you guys choose whichever way you want, plus it's, come on, it's fun to choose. Like, I love those choose your own adventure books. Those are some of my favorite. And it, it's tricky because you ch for most people, I don't know how they did it, but me, I chose my own adventure and then I went back and I chose a different adventure. So with just one book, I had like 12 adventures. It was great. Da -da -da.
gonna save that. I'll use that for something special. <sighs> Come on, YouTube. mad at YouTube. They can't help it. You know, it is what it is. They got a lot going on and who knows what type of servers and power and energy. And someone was, I was listening to one of the big YouTube people and it's something like there's 3,500 new videos that come out every minute or something like that. Some crazy high number. And I thought, well, it makes a lot of sense and why things go wonky. So I apologize, and sometimes if it doesn't work in the live stream, you can always come back. I don't see a wheel of death, so you can always come back and watch the replay. And for, you know, the replays usually work great. And you don't end up having any problems with YouTube and the wheel of death. And come on, YouTube. I'm refreshing. We probably lost poor Jackie. Hot, hot, hot. So I'm going to take these, and on the back of these petals, I have all of these scraps, right? All my heat and done scraps. So I'm going to put them on. and use them to adhere my petals in place. Now this isn't always the best idea if the fabrics are really see-through and light in color because you'll get weird shadowing. But for the flower, I don't mind weird shadowing. Even on this one, I have the salvage with all the holes, but that's gonna go underneath, so that'll be fine. I'm just gonna consider any weird shadowing as part of the flower but when you're doing this be careful that you're always feeling for the glue part so when you set it down you're not gluing your iron instead of the petal and this one has writing all over it from some previous project that I changed my mind on or I did it wrong or something I tend to forget to mirror things when I'm doing there we go when I'm doing heat and bond I tend to forget to mirror it and then I have to do a whole new one Having a lot of trouble yesterday with YouTube, it would try to load an ad and it... Yep. Yeah. And I used, I was doing this on my fabric postcards, but then I ran out and then I just started using glue sticks instead. Or just regular, well, no, I found the regular glue left weird, wet looking spots, but the glue sticks work really great. And since I have a bunch of glue sticks anyway, even Dollar Tree glue sticks work for this project when you're doing stuff like this. Hi Cordula, we're glad you can make it. Just to let you know, we're having all kinds of issues with YouTube or YouTube is having issues, but we're not complaining too much. It can't be helped. So we don't want YouTube to be mad at us. So I have heat and bond fully on the back of this circle because I can, and I want the circle to really hold things down. I am not perfect on this one. I had that one perfect one and that's it. All right. Again, when I clean up the mess, I will save that. I have all of these. So now we look at this and we're like, oh, oh, look, there's two dark ones up there. So I'm going to have that be the night sky up there. And you use a pin or the tweezers. I think I better use a pin this time. And I just scratch the heat and bond to peel that off. These all have partials, so they don't need any help. I'm leaving my iron all the way over there when you're patching up your sheets. I haven't had to put patches on my sheets, but I have stitched up like cat scratch holes and stuff. 
So these just peel off and keep the iron away. Make sure none of this is hot. So when I place this down, oh, I think I wanted it this way. So it's taller. I have a night sky I can put up there. So when you're doing stuff like this, you can always add more borders on. So if there's something like this one right here has uh, Batman's fist. So I put it over to the edge. So maybe when I put the binding on or if I decide to put a border on it or something it'll cover up his fist but there's a variety of fabrics in here you can put pins in you can baste it thread baste it you can spray well you wouldn't spray baste this I don't think because you go oh, YouTube come on we're almost done yeah the holes in the cats always always and I don't always notice until I put my toe through the hole. So, all right, so here's my purple. And now see how the purple doesn't show up at all? But that's because we haven't put the petals underneath it. So we'll go a petal and a petal. And afterwards, since I haven't put them down yet, I can, oh, look, there's one I missed. I can adjust them. You can make this on your applique pressing sheet press the whole flower together and then put it down. I'm going for the dark light, dark light. So then I need to do this. And I don't want it to be super wonky, but I'm not going to, you know, cry and, and fidget with it too much. I try to have like a five or 10 minute thing. Like, okay, I can only fuss with it for so long and then I have to stop. So I moved, this one was a hole there and this guy disappeared. So I just lifted this up to keep the, the circular going around. So if I want it to be like this guy's going to go off, do I want him to go off and put the binding on top of it? Or do I want to keep it in a little tighter? How do I want it? And then take out your camera or your phone or whatever and look through, take a picture of it and look at it. And you'll see more mistakes that way than, thank you, than, you know. And you can always have that second petal if you wanted one in there, if your fabric needed it. And now if we wanted to, we could put, we could put a white circle in the center, but then it looks like a bullseye. So it, it have to be, you have to be careful with that and depending on what you're doing. Okay, are we happy? Did I do anything? The light pinks don't look, e oh, nope, they're not even, are they? Because this one's big. So I was just gonna ask you guys, tell me what it looks like. And we like the light pinks, so we want them to kind of pop out. Let's see, under, 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 okay. I like the light colored best of those, but I think a dark pink would look good. Yes, I think like, first I was gonna go like all of these, but then it was like, nah, that would be like really flat and boring. And that's something you kind of have to look at. I could take this and do beading all the way around here, like yellow beads, and that would kind of pull all of that in. We're good, press the iron on it. Now here's the thing. Heat and bond, if it's a small little thing, let me show you what I worked on. My patrons, you guys haven't seen it yet, so I'm sorry if you're getting a sneak peek, but I have to use you as an example. This is what I'm making with my patron on Sunday. I had problems with this little stick. It was heat and bonded to this purple. I was able to peel that little stick off, but this whole thing, once it's heat and bonded down, you're done. It's, it's on the fabric, you're done. So once I put my iron on this, I'm gonna be done. I'm not gonna be able to make any adjustments by lifting up the petals. But if it's really bad, I can always, I don't know, add stitching or something to it. Or use the gingham check. Yes, use, or, I got one more or for you. There's always an or, right guys? I haven't used this yet, but just plain Amazon, a yard of each color. I have 36 yards. So there's 36 different colors of pom-poms. So before you put this down, you can tuck the pom-poms underneath here and have that sticking out. Hold on, we gotta do this. 
Hello, Anne. All right, so we're, what do you think? Yellow? Uh, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. Has to be done eventually. All right, so this is neon green, dark yellow, and light yellow. I'm thinking a dark yellow. As I said before, it doesn't need to be, no, it doesn't need to be perfect. Nope doesn't need to be perfect it's just I like to give I don't know where we're going with that specifically but I like to give a warning that once you put it down you're stuck so I could take this and sneak it underneath there it would have to go underneath all the way around right but you could end up adding something like that I decided I don't like it now but maybe I had to get a little container for these now that I've opened them up. These are really inexpensive. You look at pom-pom trim. Okay, see, yeah, the white is much better. All right, come on, YouTube. Oh, we got disconnected. I like the white. The pale, let's, all right, let's look at the pale. Hold on, I've lost everything I had to. I can't get past the egg yolk still. I have to wait for the chat to come up. I'll get a drink while I'm waiting. I'm on YouTube, you can do it. See if I can see it on my phone. White. Yep, I agree. 100% the white. Now, to do this, <clears throat> I need to take off that pom pom. It's got glue on the end so it doesn't fall apart. I can't see the picture or the comments yet, so bear with me. I bought this to go in, there we go. I bought this to go in for like uh, accents on like zipper pouches and tote bags and stuff and just weird random places. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna override everyone cause I can see it, you know, right here. And I think the white is gonna be the best option. Now for this, I will just pin because I want the heat and bond to hold the rickrack in a little bit until I can get it over and sew with it. This works out good because I don't know. I mean, I'll probably use white. I just wanted a whole bunch of different colors of the rickrack to see if I liked it in like zipper pouches because I have the really big rickrack from the mushroom houses and that's really too big a lot of people on Amazon were like this is too small I'm like oh it's too small perfect that's exactly what I want I want too small now if I had my little palm held iron do you guys see there's a recall on some of those palm held irons so double check, do a little Google search on it and see which ones are recalled. Mine that I, I know many of you have the same one that I do. I have, I have the Pure Steam. And this one is not on the recall. You need to check the model numbers and stuff. And it's a different company, not this one. So I'm okay. I think my shoelace just came untied. Just gonna put this down and get it going and then I'm gonna have to stop the live stream because this is just getting too crazy. You're welcome. I saw it on Facebook and I keep forgetting to mention it. Then I remembered again since we're talking about irons. Okay. So Let's start with the easy part. Oh, hold on. Swarzy's has been here waiting patiently for me to give her some food. Hi, Morzy. What are you waiting for, Mama? Are you being a good girl? There you go, sweetie. 
S'mores is my cat. She's so sweet. She's my youngest. She is hmm, 12, 10. She's eight in October. And she's such a patient thing. She's so nice and sweet and waits for me. Sometimes if I take too long, she'll sit on the chair and cry. But she knows mama's working, so she doesn't pester me to like go feed her somewhere else. She's happy to just eat here with me. I'm just gonna see if I could tack this down a little bit. Oh, I got a steam facial. I have a feeling that this isn't going to stay down. It's gonna to have to get sewn down by machine, which is fine. But the whole point of this is, it, this might not be what you want, but this was just an exercise of, can we come up with something to play with? And it's, it's like a stretching exercise before you go out and run. We need to stretch our little creative minds a little bit to let them loosen up, to understand that, hey, sorry, Pom Pom, don't mean to squish you, I'll fluff you up after. You know, it's okay, we can, we can do this, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, brain. We're not breaking any quilting rules or anything. This is a whole different art form. It's not an actual quilt. And remember, I don't have it underneath, heat and bond underneath all of these petals. play yeah if this one if this one was all heated up I have a smaller one too that was given to me for advent and it's for doing like the crystals on the jeans but I 100% packed that because I said I will need that so I packed it yeah we have to give our brains if, if we're if we're so used to being patchwork, nine patches, you know, even sometimes people don't do curves. And if you, not everyone does applique, and some applique people never do patchwork. So you, you have to stretch a little. You have to get out of our, ourselves, get out of our box a little, and just to figure it out and to play a little. But it's 4.30, and I think most of us have had about enough of YouTube misbehaving. As I said, we're gonna come back on the 19th at three o'clock. Whip it Wednesday. I, I, I plan on spending the weekend packing for the most part. I have to do the garage and everything, so I don't know if I'll actually work on this, but you might see this at least as a finished top piece on Whip it Wednesday. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and putting up with whatever YouTube is having the hiccups. Uh, I think you might be surprised too that once this is quilted, and you may look at this and say, I only wanted a solid background, I don't like this. Yes, first of all, I'm selling my house and I'm moving six miles up the road with my kids. And then later this year, somewhere between October and April of 2024, we're moving to Arizona. You too, Davi, have a nice weekend. So if you look at this and you're like, okay, Robin did the playing, I wanna put this on a plain light blue background, like this light blue right here, and you don't like the patchwork. So don't do the patchwork. It's your project. You can do anything you want. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off the live stream. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for putting up with a little bit of everything and for helping me just play a little bit today. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Patrons, I'll see you on Sunday. Bye.